This guy wasn't just any old extra in an Eddie Murphy music video. He's Les Garland, one of the founders and first vice presidents of MTV. And his appearance in the Party All The Time music video was a peace offering to Rick James on behalf of the network. So what were they battling about that caused them to have to make up? Well, we'll have to go to the beginning of the story. So let's get into it. But first, if you like these videos about the most scandalous people from yesteryear who make Ty's Hot Mess History channel a time capsule for the culture, subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know every time that I upload one of these videos or every time that I live stream and comment I subscribed in the comment section so that I can say hello to you. Now, on to why you are here. After Rick James was done battling with Prince, he wasn't done battling. He set his sights on what he saw as a much bigger, more important enemy, MTV. But how could that be? It was the 1980s and everyone loved MTV. The new cable station was a thing of beauty, uniting everyone across the country through music. We were all seeing and hearing the same music at the same time. Gone were the days of having to pick between rock music or R&B on your radio dial. We could all have both, and it was all on TV. At least, that is truly the way that I look back on those times. I still love everything about the 1980s, especially the music. But as an adult, I realize that my childhood memories are just that. The memories of a child who was naive and oblivious to so much that was going on in the world. After all, when MTV aired its first music video on August 1st, 1981, I was only four years old. Exactly two months later, I would turn five. So it goes without saying that I wasn't capable of seeing the problems with MTV that Rick James saw. At a first glance, it might seem that the problem that Rick James had with MTV was a personal one. You see, just months before MTV hit the airwaves, Rick James released his hit song, Super Freak, and his audience was loving it. So, Motown gave Rick the budget to have a music video produced for the song. Rick James was excited to get his video out to the masses on MTV, but the network refused to play it. But this wasn't just a Rick James issue. The fact was that at that time, MTV refused to play any black artists. All of their video programming was rock and Europop. While the cause of this decision looked like racism to some, the truth was that the decision was a holdover from radio station programming. There, the conventional wisdom was that you would lose white listeners if you played quote-unquote black music. But eventually, MTV put its first video by an all-black act on the airwaves. The group was Musical Youth, and the song was Pass the Duchy. Now, prior to this, MTV had shown black artists, but they were black artists who were members in predominantly white acts, like The Specials. They were the first group that MTV aired that had black singers and musicians. Their song called Rat Race was the 58th video played on MTV's very first broadcast day. Later, other blacks in mostly white bands would follow like Mikey Craig of Boy George and the Culture Club. But back to musical youth. They were all black, but not the same kind of all black as Rick James. For starters, they were children. Secondly, their music was reggae, which would have been more palatable to MTV's rock audience, providing a smoother transition than going from rock to straight up R&B and funk. And lastly, they weren't singing about kinky sex. And even though they did have one thing in common with Rick James, which was singing about smoking marijuana, which I'm surprised didn't raise some red flags in the 1980s, they were still a safer and less threatening bet than the braided super freak of funk who was singing about menage a trois with prostitutes. Well. MTV's decision stood. They did not play Rick's Super Freak video. Rick James was pissed, and in true Rick James fashion, 
He didn't keep his mouth closed about how he felt. In this interview with Dennis Hunt for the Los Angeles Times, that was done literally right before he and Smokey Robinson got into the booth to record the final touches for their ballad called Ebony Eyes. He took the few minutes that he had to let loose on a number of topics. His battle with MTV was just one of those topics. Here was what was written regarding that. Quote, James is usually embroiled in some controversy because he shoots from the lip. That's how he got into that war with MTV the cable channel that shows pop music videos. James accused MTV of racism because it airs so few videos featuring black artists. His videos, of course, have been excluded too. He and MTV executives have been waging this battle in the media for months. James' only regret about the MTV controversy is that other black artists have not supported him. I'm a crusader without an army, he lamented. All these black artists claim they're behind me, but when it's time to make a public statement, you can't find them. I'm mad at them, really mad. They're going to let me do all the rapping and get into trouble, and then they'll reap the benefits. It's pitiful that none of them will speak out against MTV. I could mention names and embarrass some people, but I won't. These black artists are afraid to offend MTV. They still think their videos may be played on MTV. I can't believe how stupid they are. MTV may play their videos when hell freezes over, but not before. Everyone is waiting to see if MTV will play a James video from his new album, but he hasn't even made one yet. I'm going to take my time making this video, he said. Can you imagine? With all the hell I've raised, for me to come out with a garbage video? Actually, I don't care if it's played on MTV or not. They'll probably show the video on MTV because they think that it's going to shut me up. That's not going to stop anything. I'm not going to be happy until MTV is showing a ton of black videos regularly. End quote. Now, let's dissect a few parts of this interview. Rick James wanted support from other black artists, but he thought that they were not speaking out against MTV in hopes that their silence would get their videos played on the network. I actually don't think that he's wrong about this, but I can't lie. I wish that he would have named names. Let me know in the comments section if you agree or disagree with Rick's point that the black music artists of the time didn't want to rock the boat, hoping that their silence would get them airplay on MTV. He made it very clear that he was disappointed in those black musicians who would not publicly stand with him. But he did get some support from one artist in particular. David Bowie, white man, and music legend. We'll get to his thoughts on the matter in a moment. I have to say that one thing that I find funny about this whole situation is that Rick James had been bitching and moaning about being excluded from MTV almost since its inception. But even up until the time of this interview, he hadn't even made one music video. At this point, he was literally angry with MTV for saying that they were not going to play a video that he hadn't even created. In another interview, Rick James said, you know, This isn't the Wizard of Oz. I mean, there are black people here and we make music and we spend thousands, a hundred thousand dollars on videos. And we're not doing this for the sake of because we enjoy doing it. We're doing it because it's part of the art. And we're being excluded from the art. Bob Pittman the creator of MTV and its first CEO said this about the Rick James controversy in a special report on CBS. Their channel was basically a rock channel on TV, and Rick was an R&B artist. If he ever created a rock video, they would be glad to play it. But there are a couple of problems with this statement. First, by the time that the statement was made, MTV was already playing soul music but from white artists like Hall & Oates and ABC. And secondly, by this time, Billie Jean by Michael Jackson was being played on MTV in heavy rotation. Now, Michael Jackson had a number of songs that had a rock edge, but if MTV was saying that they couldn't play most black artists in general, and Rick James in particular, because their station only played rock music, that excuse just would not fly because Billie Jean was 
by no means a rock song. I think that a lot of people would agree that Super Freak has more of a rock sound than Billie Jean. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comment section. The word from the top guys at MTV was that they were playing what teens wanted to see. To that, Rick James said, I mean, a lot of white kids have put on MTV and say, yeah, where, where's Stevie Wonder? Where's Marvin Gaye? Where's Rick James? You know, where are all these acts next to my Billy Joel record is Rick James. And next to, next to my Van Halen record, there's um, Earth, Wind & Fire. And next to my uh, um, ACDC record, there's, um, you know, uh, maybe Aretha Franklin, Dinah Ross or something. Where are these people? I mean, don't we exist? Furthermore, and I'm skipping ahead of myself a little bit, getting to David Bowie's interview with MTV, this was his response to MTV saying that they were playing what teens wanted to hear. And certainly we're a rock and roll station now. The question would be asked, well, should PLJ play uh, the Isley Brothers? Well, you and I might say, yeah, because we have grown up in an era when the Isley Brothers mean something to me, and so do the Spinners, even way after the Isley Brothers. But what does it mean to a 17-year-old? Well, if you talk on the phones to these guys like I did when I was in radio, it's Well, scary. I'll tell you what it means. I'll tell you what maybe the Isley Brothers or Marvin Gaye means to a black 17-year-old. Ah. And surely he's part of America as well. No question. We'll get to more of his thoughts in a moment, as well as the backstory on that interview. So... Maybe what MTV wanted to say without saying it was that they catered to white teens. Or at least that's what they thought that they were doing. Because when they finally caved and started playing black artists in heavy rotation, white teens were watching those videos too. And I must digress for just a moment here to say that I hope that maybe one day someone will realize that people, not white people or black people, but just people, like good music, not white music or black music. And MTV's final reason, or excuse depending on your point of view, for not playing music videos by black artists was simply that black artists weren't really making music videos. Now, you may have noticed that MTV gave a number of reasons for their decision to not play black musicians on their network. Maybe all of these reasons were true in the hearts and minds of MTV executives. Personally, I think that MTV kept giving all of these reasons slash excuses for their decision was because they wanted the public to believe anything other than what Rick James was saying, which was that MTV was racist. And hardly anyone wants to be publicly labeled as racist. Not even racists. So. All of these reasons slash excuses were being thrown out there in the hopes that something would stick or be believable to a large group of people. But this would have been a great moment for everyone involved to remove emotions from the situation and realize that it is possible for a situation to not be racist but still have racial implications. I honestly believe that this issue with MTV and black artists was one of those situations. So, MTV was right. There weren't a lot of black artists who were making music videos when MTV started in 1981. But, even that statement is not so black and white. No pun intended. True, black artists did not have a ton of music videos to submit to MTV to even be played. But, Record labels didn't want to risk shelling out the money for music videos only to not have them seen. MTV was the only thing of its kind when it started, and all that the labels knew was that MTV wasn't playing black videos. So you can see that it was kind of a which came first, the chicken or the egg scenario. Were black artists not being played because MTV didn't play them? Did MTV not have many black videos to play? Were music labels not investing in music videos for most black artists out of the realistic fear that the videos would never be seen? The answer to all of these questions is yes. Rick James was one of the few black artists in the very early days of music videos who had a label behind him that believed enough in his star power to invest in music videos for him when MTV started. In the late 1970s and early 1980s, 
He was Motown's golden child. He was given a six-figure budget to create two music videos. And that was huge at the time. Like anything else, when it's brand new, people don't know if it will last. So many don't feel comfortable with the idea of putting in a lot of money on these new ventures. So a lot of MTV's first music videos, even though we look back on them today with a wonderful sense of nostalgia, they were in fact quite terrible in terms of visual quality. But Rick had a chance to do something that would have been amazing by early 1980s standards because Motown gave him the money to do it big. But the question was, who would ever get to see the video or videos that he intended to make? As far as David Bowie standing in solidarity with Rick James, well, whatever Rick was upset about the black artists for not saying, David Bowie more than made up for it. Not only was he not silent, he confronted MTV face to face on their channel. It all happened when David sat down for an interview with VJ Mark Goodman as a part of a press junket for his Let's Dance song and video. And at a point in the interview, the interviewee became the interviewer when David Bowie said to Mark Goodman, quote, It occurred to me that, having watched MTV over the last few months, that it's a solid enterprise and it's got a lot going for it. I'm just floored by the fact that there are so few black artists featured on it. Why is that? End quote. Believe it or not, the VJ, clearly caught off guard, was able to get out an answer. Not that it was his responsibility, it really should not have fell on his shoulders, but the answer that he gave was not one that David Bowie was buying. And that was obvious because of David's eye rolling and body language and the fact that he kept pressing and didn't drop the subject. Mark's response basically was that MTV was moving in that direction, the direction of showcasing more black artists. David Bowie replied that the change was happening way too slowly, in addition to a whole lot more, and followed up with even more questions. Is it, no, is, well, it not, is it not possible that it's, it's, it should be a conviction of the station? Um, is it, it, should it not be a challenge to try and make the media far more integrated in, I those, think in it's music, happening. especially of anything in musical terms? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I think it's happening because white music and white musicians are now starting to play more than ever. What, uh, more than they have lately, let's say, in the last 10 years. Yeah. What, what black artists have been into. Mm -hmm. So you might remember earlier that I mentioned that MTV was playing artists like Holland Oates and ABC. And that is what the VJ is referring to here, saying that, well, hey, we are kind of moving in that direction. We're playing soul music just by white guys. And he really meant that. Anyway, Bowie continued to press Mark Goodman in a similar manner for the next six minutes of what was only a 16-minute interview. You can see the interview in its entirety here on YouTube. I will leave a link to it in the description box. But the point here is that David Bowie understood the frustration of Rick James and the point that he was trying to make. And this confrontation with Mark Goodman wasn't an outlier in Bowie's career. These are the kinds of stances he would take on a regular basis. And knowing this about Bowie might not come as a surprise to you if you consider that he gave Luther Vandross his big break into the music industry. Nevertheless, the change that Bowie and Rick James had been wanting did come to MTV, eventually. If musical youth with past the duchy cracked through the color barrier at MTV, Michael Jackson absolutely shattered it, becoming the first black artist to be played in heavy rotation on the channel. But not only did he accomplish that goal, which seemed unthinkable at that time, Michael Jackson played a huge role in putting MTV on the map, at the time when MTV was by all means just a fledgling cable channel. And even though MTV never played Super Freak, they did make peace with Rick James. Which brings us back to this guy, 
MTV's co-founder, Les Garland. As a sign of their peace offering, he appeared in the video of Eddie Murphy's song, Party All The Time, which Rick James produced, and he also co-starred in the video, finally having his chance to appear on MTV. Who knows, maybe under different circumstances, Super Freak could have got an airplay on MTV. Maybe if Freak James had talked to the right person at MTV instead of spending so much time kissing the wrong asses at the network, looking for any opportunity to bow down to his white male superiors, because when it came down to exactly why MTV passed on Super Freak, it was later made known that the final decision was made by their director of acquisitions, a woman named Carolyn Baker. Not only was she a woman, she was a black woman, and in her own words in the book called I Want My MTV, quote, It was an MTV that turned down Super Freak. It was me. I turned it down. You know why? Because there were half-naked women in it, and it was a piece of crap. As a black woman, I did not want that representing my people as the first black video on MTV. End quote. And kudos to her for having some foresight. BET could have used a person like her on their payroll, but that's a video for another day. Well, so much for the Rick James quote about not wanting to put out a garbage video after raising all that hell about not being played on MTV. That Los Angeles Times interview that Rick James did with Dennis Hunt covered Rick's frustrations about a lot of topics. One of those topics was his outright hatred for Prince. I published a video about his comments regarding Prince and their rivalry that you can see here. I will also leave a link to it in the description box. My sources for this story are The Los Angeles Times Archives, 1983 Song Facts Washington Post here on YouTube, MTV News and Hezekiah News and Films. I Want My MTV, The Uncensored Story of the Music Video Revolution by Rob Tenenbaum and Craig Marks. And Super Freak, The Life of Rick James by Peter Benjaminson. Are you a content creator, influencer, or blogger who feels like your platform could use an extra boost? Are you thinking about becoming a content creator but you don't know where to start and you want to be sure that you dot all of your I's and cross all of your T's? If so, Layla Lynn can likely show you exactly what you need to get on your way. Her fun new class is called The Business of Blogging with Layla Lynn and in it she is sharing the fundamental principles of blogging in 2022. Because let's face it, social media is a moving target and what worked well five years ago is likely not what works well today. And with Layla Lynn, you're getting the information from someone who is successful at putting the principles to practice on her own social media platforms, and she literally has the credentials to back it all up as she holds degrees in social media marketing. Layla Lynn is a multiple six-figure earner whose first social media marketing course helped this channel go from earning $30 a month to earning five figures a month. I'm ready to dig in my heels and learn even more so that I can earn even more. Are you with me? If so, hit my link at the top of the description box and join her class to access this amazing, affordable advice from a woman who knows her business, the business of blogging. If you have a business, product, service, YouTube channel, or social media account that you would like to promote on my channel, email me at Taiwan at TaiSaidWhatTaiSaid.com to get rates for advertising on my community tab, my live streams, and or my edited videos, just like this one. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Tai Said What Tai Said channel. Please leave a thumbs up and comment so that we can get a discussion going. And share this video on all of your social media, especially your Facebook. That really helps me out a lot. And subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know when my next video is ready for you. And if you don't like what I'm saying, but you love it, feel free to hit that thanks button just below your video screen there. 
and send me some donations 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 yeah baby see you on the next video